हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू आज माय नेम इज राहुल सिंह एंड आई एम वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन गवर्नमेंट इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज नॉर्थ गांव आई एम टीचिंग द मशीन कंपोनेंट डिजाइन दैट्स व्हाई टुडे आई विल टेक अ लेक्चर ऑन डिजाइन ऑफ पावर इस दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर द इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट्स बिकॉज द पावर स्क्रू हैज द लॉट्स ऑफ एप्लीकेशन इन अवर societies and uh, many mechanical equipments such as the power screws are used for lift in the screw uh, jacks for uh, lifting and uh, lowering down the loads in uh, bench vices for clamping the objects and uh, so many applications in our automobile industries and day to day life one of our uh, the power screw i have this is the power screw and uh, this is the nut right so we can see if there are lots of thread on this and if the nut is tight if it is rotated it will start starting along the axis that means we can simply define the definition of the power screw the power screw is only a mechanical device which is used for converting the rotary motion into the translational motion and for used for transmitting the power right but it has the uh disadvantages due to which it is not used for transmitting the continuous force okay but because disadvantage is that it has the efficiency less than 50% so not used for transmitting continuous power is it it is used only for intermittent power so i have told this because uh, uh, there are uh, many devices which are used for power transmitting right so we have seen ki there are the threads made on the power screw due to which the motion is transmitting and power is transmitting so first of all before uh, we will discuss the forms of threads is it so forms of threads there are uh, various types of uh, threads a square thread right so our topic is forms of threads right first is square thread second is trapezoidal thread it's special type of one of the type is acme thread both are same but slight different is there that i will tell and third is buttress thread what is the difference a square thread trapezoidal thread or acme thread they are used for transmitting power in both direction either in the right hand side or left hand side in both direction you can transfer the power or the motion but the thread thread is used for transmitting the power only in one direction only in one direction right and some point we have to uh, which are which should be remember about these thread with the efficiency the square thread if i draw the diagram of the square thread something like like this right then this is the square thread right then uh, what is the uh, 
these are the t threads 1 2 3 three threads are drawn and the distance from here to here this is called pitch and uh, this is the thread thickness and this is the thread height right and thread thickness and thread height if it is a square thread then both have the same values then these are taken to as we p by 2 and p by 2 for the square thread right but it is quite uh, difficult in construction it is difficult in construction next is the trapezoidal thread if i draw a trapezoidal thread here of the trapezoidal thread. Trapezoidal thread. Right? Then uh, this is the angle. This angle is about 30 degree for the trapezoidal thread. But the ACME thread is one of the type of the trapezoidal thread. Only difference is there. For ACME thread, this angle will become 29 degree. Is it? So, if I draw here, ACME thread, then nothing is the difference. The advantage and disadvantage are same for both. But only difference is, this angle is 29 degree for ACME thread. Is it? Only this is the difference between the uh, trapezoidal thread and the square thread. Is it? And one of the other type is the buttress thread. Buttress thread is something like uh, like this. Buttress thread. Is it? Square thread, trapezoidal, ecme and buttress thread. This line is vertical, this is inclined, and this angle is about uh, 45 degree. If I will tell the if about the efficiency of this thread, then a square thread has the more efficiency than the equate thread, then more efficiency than the trapezoidal thread. Is it? And but this thread. The efficiency of buttress stress is greater than the trapezoidal thread. This point should be remembered about the threads. Right? And second point is should be remembered is buttress threads are used for transferring the power loss in one direction. And uh, square thread, trapezoidal thread, ECME thread, all are used for transferring the power in both directions. Next. Next is the terminology which are used in the power screw are the uh, that uh, we have discussed about the pitch this is the p it is the pitch so now we will discuss about the terminologies so just i am not here now terminology of a power is first is the pitch what is pitch pitch is a it is the smallest axial distance between two adjacent threads. Right? If I draw in a diagram, then this is something like. One thread, second thread, then if I take a point about on this side, then second point should be this side. So this distance will be called the pitch. Right? Second, if I tell about the heat, I will denote by capital L. What is heat? It is the axial distance. Uh, 
trebled by a screw in one complete rotation of this. Is it? Uh, as I make a complete revolution of this, then there will be an axial uh, displacement. Then in one complete revolution, at what axial distance is covered, this is called the lead. And, uh, right? So, what is the, if, uh, if uh, this is, for example, it is a single start thread. Single start means the lead is equal to H. Right? If it is a double start, then lead will be equal to 2 times of P. Means, in one complete revolution, the screw will travel 2 times of the pitch. And if it is a single start, then it says, okay, in one complete revolution, the screw will travel the axial distance will be equal to the pitch. And this is the relation uh, between the lead and the pitch. So now, we can write something. Okay, number of start is equal to lead upon pitch. If it is a single start, then both are same, which is a double, then lead will be equal to 2 times of pitch. Next terminology is the nominal diameter. Nominal uh, is the major diameter of the power screw. Uh, then uh, third one is Nominal diameter, also your major diameter or outer diameter. May say denote karma, denoted by D. So it is the major diameter of the screw, right? Because uh, there are the threads. Then outer diameter is the nominal diameter and the screws are defined on the basis of nominal diameter. Are defined on the basis of nominal or major diameter. Is it? Now, next is the fourth. This is the nominal, then uh, core diameter. I will uh, denote by DC. It is also what? Root diameter or minor diameter. Is it? Then, how we can find? the core diameter from the nominal diameter, the expression is given that dc will be equal to d minus p. p is the pitch. For one point, you should remember here, if pitch is not given and you have to find the dc, then how you will calculate? And one expression you should remember. For isometric thread, that dc will be equal to 0.84 of d. This point will be helpful in uh, various competitive exams. So you should remember this point, right? If it is pitch is given, then dc is equal to d minus p. Right? Next is a mean diameter. So mean, we are of you know. This is the fifth point. This is mean diameter. This is dm. Then mean diameter is how we will find d plus dc by or we can write d minus p d minus 0.5 p or we can write uh, dc plus 0.5 p and the, by any expression you can find the mean diameter right so these are the terminologies which are used in uh, the design of power screw Oh. Right? Then we get a nomenclature of the thread.
first two. If it is somewhere hidden, S Q 40 into 70. Then what does it mean? It means the 7 represent pitch in M. Right? 40 represent nominal diameter. I have already told that the screws are uh, defined on the basis of a nominal diameter. That means 40 is a nominal diameter. This is also in mm. And S cube, you can imagine that this is a square diameter. Is it? If somewhere it is written like uh, in case of uh, here, a square, it is written TR. What it is written? TR. Then, all things will remain same. A square thread is re replaced by trapezoidal thread. Right? One more presentation, the nomenclature by which these screws are uh, defined. This is something like 40. 40 P centimeter. Then what does it mean? It means it is pitch that is 7 mm. This is lead. And this is nominal diameter and this is trapezoidal pad. Now here we can see if it is a double starter, if it is a triple start, then the representation will be given like this. Because from here we can easily find the which type of the thread it is. Right? Is again I have already told is a number. Sorry, I have already told number of start is equal to lead upon pitch. Here, if I see the lead is fourteen mm and pitch is seven mm, this is two. Means it is a double start. If it is not written, these on these all are the single start thread. So this is the nomenclature how they, how they the screws are represented. So by representation we can easily calculate the value of the pitch and the nominal diameter and with the help of nominal diameter we can easily find out the core diameter and the mean diameter. Right? Now we will next move towards a top requirement or a force requirement for lifting or uh, lowering down of the load. So we all of you know he, the torque is a force into distance. If we will find the force and we can easily calculate the for torque and for the torque the force will be the tangential force. Right? For example if I uh, draw a diagram of a power screw like uh, here have a look on it. like I have drawn it and uh, something like and here is the load which is put uh, here is the load this is load done right and this is the lever on which distance is at. and we are applying the force here this is, uh, if I am applying the force on a handle or a lever, then I have represented by P is H. Is it? Now, what is happening here? If I apply the load, apply the load like this or like this, then it will start rotating. And if it will start rotating, then a screw will rotating. Then when the screw will rotating, then it will, either it will lift the load or either it will lower the load. Right? So there are two cases should be different. There are two cases, either the load will be lifted or either the load will be lowered. Is it? So for uh, lifting of the load, if I know the value of the load and just I want to calculate the what force should I apply for lifting the load, then uh, there is uh, some uh, uh, calculation for the load. Right? So one thing I just want to tell you here, right? This is the core diameter which I have already discussed 
and this is the outer diameter, this is the one the nominal diameter. There are two diameters so on which diameter we should calculate. So what we do will do, we will calculate the things on the mean diameter. That's why I have written the mean diameter. This is the mean diameter and we will all do the calculation on the mean diameter. If I draw a top diagram here, top view, something like it. Then so what is, if I apply a load, then there is an effort or tangential load is acting on it. And uh, the value of the pH is something different than this value. I take this value is P and I give it the name is effort. I am applying the effort. Right? This is the DM. Then how the torque is generated? The torque requirement. And torque, you can write the torque how this P into dm by 2 and also you can easily find the torque because we are applying the force here. So in a other way we can also uh, write pH into this distance and labor. So by both we can uh, calculate the torque. This depends on the question, what is given in the question. But for the further calculation, uh, I am taking only this effort, I am not taking this labor. Right? One little consideration here. That in one revolution of the uh, screw, the load will be lifted by a distance that is called the lead. Is it? So one can that one rotation of a screw will lift the load by the axial distance lead. Is it? Then on the basis of this we can uh, find uh, some uh, angle because uh, here is the angle, this is the helix angle is given. This. So we will find the relation between the helix signal and uh, this all. Then, uh, so in a triangle, if I want to draw, so then uh, if I want to travel because this is uh, the helix signal, in a triangle form I can write like this, this, this is the helix signal. Then this complete rotation, and this value is pi dm. Complete rotation means the circumferential distance, this is pi dm. And lift by the load, that is equal to n. And this is the triangular relation between the circumferential distance and the lead. From this triangle, we can easily find, we can easily find or we can easily write, the tan alpha will be equal to L upon pi dm. For calculating the helix angle, this relation will be helpful. That's why I have written here, and alpha is the helix. See? So for calculating, we will do the force analysis and first uh, draw the force angle and resolve the forces for calculating the torque requirement and other things. Then force diagram. We have to discuss the two cases for lifting up the load, for lowering the load. First, I am discussing for lifting the load. I will tell you what is the difference in lifting and lowering. There is a slight difference. Just have a look on it. I have drawn this angle. I have already discussed so this distance is by this vertical distance is L and this angle is L. Is it? And there is a load. And we are applying the tangential effort. This is P. Like this. In a horizontal plane, we are applying the force P. And due to which, the load is lifting or lowering. Right? Right. For example, uh, if it is lifting. Lifting means the load will go up. If load will go up, then friction will always act opposite to the motion. If the load is lifting up, then friction will act 
opposite to this motion, then it should be downward. Yes or no? And direction of the load will be always be vertically downward because load hai, to vertically downward hi lagega. And then agar ye upper ki taraf jana hai, to effort will be applied to towards the that's why this is the difference and this is the friction force where phi will represent and uh, by the mu n and there is a normal reaction and this is vertically vertical to the spring right if lifting of the load then it will moving uh, friction force will act along this direction that means the block will moving the motion is upward that's why the p is acting towards the right side for lifting the load this will be the force diagram for calculating our uh, requirement torque and force. Nothing, this is quite simple. So, torque for torque, we have to find this effort. If I calculate the effort, then torque will easily be calculated. If the torque is calculated, then required power is also calculated. Right? So, then now what we will do? We will resolve these forces either along the plane and vertical to the plane, or uh, but what I am going to I am uh, going to resolve these forces along this force effort P and along this W load W because I am interested in calculating the finding the relation between the P and the W only. So, what I am going, I am applying equilibrium conditions first. I resolve the forces along the horizontal direction and what solution of forces along the axis policy I take this direction as a positive and this direction as a negative then uh, I will write P I uh, Write this uh, angle here. This angle is alpha, and this angle is alpha. P is acting that direction. The result of n, a vertical component in this direction. This is opposite to this. So I will write equal to half opposite. Then n. This is sin alpha. Is it? And uh, mu n component is also opposite and it is mu n cos alpha. This is my first equation. Second, along horizontal direction and next I will take along this all the forces along vertical direction. I will write the equation summation of vertical forces equal to 0. I am taking this direction as a positive and this direction is a negative. And I will write the equation something like W equal to this is favoring, this will go minus, this is opposite, then it will come something N cos alpha, this is uh, minus mu N sin alpha. This is my second equation. Is it? For finding out the relation between P and W, what I do? I take the <coughs> ratio of these two equations. I'm going to rub it. No requirement of this now. So I have rubbed it. Next step is what I will do? I will divide the equation 1 by equation 2. Then equation will come uh, remain like when n is common in both this and this, n will cancel out. So the equation will become only sin alpha plus mu cos alpha upon n is out cos alpha minus mu sin alpha. I have taken the n common and it is cancelled out because both has the n. If I write here, just this is n, this is n, this is cancel out. Is it? Now, what I will do? I take I take cos alpha common. If 
from both numerator and denominator both numerator and denominator then what will happen then p by w will become sin alpha by cos alpha this will become tan alpha plus mu upon cos alpha is taken out common minus mu tan alpha right we know and mu is equal to tan phi where phi is friction angle we all of you know this if i put yeah if i replace mu by tan phi then the expression will become like uh, p by w that is equal to that is equal to tan phi plus tan alpha upon 1 minus tan phi tan alpha and i think all of you know it is a expression of tan a plus b so b write this expression in a simple form i write this expression in a very simple form then p will become equal to w and phi plus alpha if it is a effort p is effort that i have already told then torque will be equal to p dm by 2 then torque will be equal to p if i replace the w then expression will become p dm by 2 tan phi plus expression of torque for lifting off in the same way we will uh, find the expression for the expression of torque for lowering the load now we will move towards that i am going to rubbing it now case second for lowering the load draw the force right now here okay if i will not okay this is pi dm this is l this is alpha okay now for lowering the load lowering the load we are moving towards downward direction then if we are moving towards the downward direction then friction will act towards upward direction and friction direction will be like this this is mu into n normal reaction again same vertical force will be vertically downward if the friction force is upward then effort will be in this direction this is towards the left this is the basic difference between lifting and lowering the load we have discussed in lifting the load friction force was acting towards the direction and the effort was acting towards the right side but in lowering the load friction force will act upward side and effort will act towards left side right now see what will uh, the will, will be the difference in the expression now see dissolve the forces again in uh, horizontal and vertical direction so i have uh, this and uh, again this angle is alpha right so apply equilibrium conditions again same way what we have uh, done earlier first i will resolve the forces along the horizontal then uh, resolve along the vertical along horizontal direction 
horizontal direction what will expression will come p this direction may and is equal to mu n cos alpha minus n sin alpha is it we see is it now for equation is one next for along vertical direction if i can write w equal to this will come and cos alpha plus mu y sin is it again for finding the relation with the end of loop what i will do equation first divided by equation second that is p by w will be equal to and is taken common from both the expression will become something like n cos alpha minus sin alpha upon n cos alpha plus mu sin alpha and then we cancel out again i am taking the cos alpha common from uh, numerator and the denominator both then expression will reduce to like take cos alpha common from numerator and denominator an expression will reduce to something like p by w equal to any skin cell no or this this will one minus tan alpha is it upon 1 plus mu sin oh i have missed something here it will come mu Uh, I have missed something. Here it will mu n cos alpha, right? So here it will come down, right? Again, if I replace uh, mu is equal to tan phi, is it? Because phi is friction angle. Then I can write this expression again equal to tan phi. Minus tan alpha one plus tan phi. What I have done? This will become tan alpha one plus tan phi. Tan alpha. Right. The next question will. This is the expression of tan a minus b. The equation will become w tan phi minus. So, then uh, third point. For lowering the load, will become t equal to p dm by two. That is equal to w dm by two tan phi minus. What is the difference come in lifting the load? The expression was same. The expression was W So we have calculated the expression T will be equal to W dm by 2 tan phi plus alpha and T will be equal to W dm by 2 tan phi minus alpha This is for Lifting. And this is for lowering. Right? The only difference scale is the only difference scale is 
uh, here is plus sign and here is negative sign. Right? Here is the plus sign and here is the minus sign. Then it says in the expression, if any value of the alpha, for any value of the phi, the expression will always come positive. Means for lifting of the load, we have to give the force always. This expression tells in this build, this is telling कि आपको हमेशा load apply करना ही पड़ेगा आपको अगर load को lift करना है तो because this value will come always positive this value says कि it may be positive may be negative if phi की value less than alpha which implies Torque is negative. Torque is negative means you have to not apply any force for lowering the loads. The load will automatically come down. It implies no load or you can say break. Break. What is break? In break, you have to apply the force. So for uh, lowering, if it is the case that phi is less than alpha, then T is negative or no load or the brake is applied. Means load will automatically come down. Load will self come down. And this condition is known as overhauling. इसी कंडीशन को हम बोलते हैं ओवर हॉप है दिस कंडीशन इज नोन एज ओवर हॉलिंग और बैक डाइविंग अगर phi की वैल्यू लेस देन अल्फा होती है आप लिख सकते हैं मे बी पॉजिटिव और मे बी नेगेटिव इज इट बट इफ द फाइ इज ग्रेटर देन अल्फा देन वॉट विल हैपन दिस इज द केस इफ फाइ इज लेस देन अल्फा देन टॉर्क विल बी नेगेटिव टॉर्क इज नेगेटिव मीन्स यू हैव टू अप्लाई नो लोड और ब्रेक नो लोड और ब्रेक no brake is applied uh, no load or no brake is applied matlab load will self come down and this condition is known as overhauling or the back driving but if phi is greater than alpha then what will happen now see discuss if phi is greater than equal to alpha what it will say it will say t is positive or zero when it is equal but it means positive positive means force is required to lower down the load means load will not come down automatically or by self you have to apply the weight for lowering down the load right this condition this condition is known as self locking means आपने उसे लिफ्ट किया और आप उसे जहां छोड़ेंगे वहीं पर लोड रुक जाएगा वो अपने आप नीचे नहीं आएगा इसका मतलब क्या होगा कुछ सेल्फ लॉक हो इसी वजह से इसको बोल देते हैं हम सेल्फ लॉकिंग कंडीशन ये प्रॉपर्टी है बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉपर्टी है हमें स्क्रू चेक्स में इस प्रॉपर्टी की बहुत ज्यादा रिक्वायरमेंट होती है हम वहां पर कार को लिफ्ट करते हैं और जहां पर भी हम उसे छोड़ देते हैं वो कार वहीं के भी रुक जाती है हमें कोई एक्स्ट्रा फोर्स लगाने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती this is 
required property in his school jacks is it so we have discussed the two condition overhauling and uh, self locking condition is it so what we have discussed for the self locking phi should be greater than alpha right if i write phi uh, just uh, some little discussion more is required here if you want you can write something like for self locking phi should be greater than should be equal to alpha right phi is replaced by tan phi or this is tan alpha right tan phi is replaced by mu that is equal to tan alpha and what is tan alpha tan alpha is l upon phi for self locking for self locking the coefficient of friction provided on the thread should be greater than or equal to by this ratio this is l upon pi dm and l upon pi dm is the ratio is the tan alpha but the tangent of the property for the self locking between the coefficient of the friction and the helix angle is it now we will move towards the efficiency as uh, previously in, in the starting i have told the screw jacks have the very less efficiency less than 50% now i will discuss i will show you the the screw jacks uh, sorry the power screws has a very less efficiency due to which they are not used for transmitting they are there for the power transmissions they are not used right next topic is efficiency of Square threaded is we have all lot of snow. What is the efficiency? The efficiency is always work output upon work input. What is the work output? Work is the force into distance. What is the work output? Work output is force into distance travelled in direction of flow. Yes or no? Work input. It is also uh, type of force into distance. It is also force into distance in. Uh, in direction of look right so what is distance force output is our output is to lift the load load means w and what distance it will travel this is by the lead is it what force we are applying this is the effort p and what distance this is the pi d pi d ye hai hamara work output and this is work input and this is the efficiency is it now we have already know the relation between w and p if i put w l upon p is replaced by w tan phi plus alpha right and l upon pi dm is here is it and uh, this expression is l upon pi dm can be replaced by tan alpha we have already discussed uh, efficiency can be written in a simple form that is tan alpha w w cancel tan phi plus f 
from here we can say the efficiency is depends on alpha and phi alpha and phi then what you want to say if i draw the graphical presentation okay if i increase the phi then what will happen on the efficiency if i increase the alpha then what will happen on the phi there are the two variables if i plot the graph or if i do the graphical presentation for the efficiency by the experiment it is seen that uh, it is seen that if i draw There are two variables, alpha and phi. Then, if I take one thing constant and if I draw the graph for the helix angle and the alpha, if I take the efficiency on vertical axis and helix angle on the x-axis, then it will come experimentally that the graph will exponentially increasing up to the 20 degree of the helix angle then slightly increase then after 60 it will lower down so it will give the maximum value something the graph will come like this and at about the helix angle between 40 to 50 in between it will give the maximum value I have if I, I have drawn this graph for the point 1 we equal to point 1 so the graph is saying that yeah if I write above so it can be seen from the graph that alpha increases as helix angle increases up to 20 degree is it it efficiency is maximum and alpha is ranging between 40 to 45 something in between at alpha is equal to 40 to 50 in between is giving a maximum value and after the 60 it will start decreasing and efficiency decreases as alpha increases after 60 so these three points can be concluded from this graph up to the 20 degree efficiency is increasing as the helix angle is increasing but after the 20 degree increasing but at a very small road and it gives the maximum value in between 40 to 50 efficiency will be the maximum value and after the uh, 50 it will start decreasing but after the 60 it will slightly yeah rapidly decreasing after the 60 degree so these three points efficiency is increasing and alpha increases and one more point okay, with the <coughs> Increasing the coefficient of friction, efficiency is also decreasing. Right? So efficiency is decreasing as mu increases. So these uh, four points you have to remember about this. Always. As the coefficient of friction increases, the efficiency is decreases. Right? So, <coughs> Now, this is the, from the graph, these four points are concluded. Now, for finding out the maximum efficiency, what 
will be the maximum efficiency of a power screw. So what would we will do? We will take some assumptions. So for maximum efficiency, of square threaded what we do we have efficiency is equal to tan alpha upon tan phi plus alpha I break it into the sine and cos this I can write sine alpha upon cos alpha. So in the same way, this can be written as sine phi plus alpha upon cos phi plus alpha. Expression can be written as sine alpha cos phi plus alpha upon cos alpha sine phi plus If I multiply 2 on both sides, if I multiply 2, I can 2 multiply by 2 in both numerator and denominator, then expression is reduced to something like this expression will become we know the formula of 2 sin a cos b. This is sin a plus b plus sin a minus b. If I write the expression of 2 cos a sin b cos a sin b then this will be sin a plus b minus sin a minus b. If I apply these two expressions in 2 sin a cos b and 2 cos a sin b the expression will reduce to something like uh, sin a plus b this plus this this will become 2 alpha plus phi minus sin phi a minus b this minus this sin minus minus sin minus phi and will come minus outside upon and this expression will reduce to something like uh, sin a plus b this will become uh, sin 2 alpha plus phi minus minus and minus 5 this will come plus is it so this expression is reduced to in this form so for maximum efficiency this expression sin 2 alpha plus 5 sin 2 alpha plus 5 if the value will become 1 then it will give the maximum value right for Maximum efficiency sin 2 alpha by 5 should be equal to 1 and that is equal to sin 90 degree. Then 2 alpha plus 5 equal to 90. Then I can write something like alpha equal to 45 minus 5 by for maximum efficiency and the maximum efficiency expression is written as maximum this can be written as 1 minus 7 upon this this expression is for the maximum efficiency and normal efficiency is 10 and 5 upon 10 5 plus this is not maximum this is maximum So this is the difference between these two formula. If in a question it is asked to maximum efficiency, then you will apply this formula 1 minus sin phi upon 1 plus sin phi. If in a question only you have to calculate the efficiency, then you can write 10 alpha upon 10 phi plus alpha. Is it? For self-locking condition, the efficiency can be reduced. Right? For 
for self locking condition i we have already know this should be greater than should be equal to alpha is it so for self locking condition this condition efficiency is formula is 10 alpha upon 10 pi plus alpha if i replace alpha equal to 5 alpha equal to 5 then expression can be replaced by 10 phi upon 10 to 5 and 10 to 5 formula is 10 to a what is the formula 1 minus uh, 2 10 a upon 1 minus 10 square uh, this is 2 10 a upon 1 minus n square. If I replace this formula 10 to a, an expression can be written as 10 phi. This will come 1 minus 10 square phi upon 10 phi. Is it? I have rub it. Is it? Now, the expression reduced to uh, 10 phi, 10 phi, 2 10 phi, hmm? so 10 phi, 10 phi cancel out and it is written as FCC will be equal to 1 minus 2 minus 10 square phi by it says does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? The expression is given so half means 50% minus something. Minus something means minus something. Minus something means efficiency should be less than 50%. In any case, that it is not possible if frictionless phi equal to 0 then efficiency will be 50 percent but for frictionless means the maximum efficiency of a power is can be 50 percent only when the friction is not present but uh, it is impossible if there is no friction between the threads there will be the friction between the thread then efficiency will always be less than the 50 percent this is the reason due to which the power screws are not used for power transmission system. These are used for power transmission in an intermittent power transfer for a small space, but not for the continuous uh, power supply. Right? Now, now we have calculated the torque. Uh, one thing we have uh, we have all calculated calculation is done for the square thread if it is a acme thread or trapezoidal thread then what will the change will come in expression of power or uh, tau trapezoidal or acme thread one change you do nothing more requirement other all other calculation will remain same for this but <coughs> If I do this angle is two times of beta, is it? Then this angle will be beta. If this is W, then this component will be W upon cos beta. Okay. Normal reaction will always act perpendicular to the surface. Normal reaction will be act. The normal reaction will be act perpendicular to the surface because the friction force is always the normal reaction any 
equal to W upon cos beta. And friction force, friction force is F is equal to mu into N. This is mu W cos beta. I can write W1 into mu. What is mu1? I have replaced mu1 equal to mu upon cos beta. Means in the calculation of effort or torque for the square thread, replace the mu by mu1. The whole expression, whole calculation will remain same as we have done for the square threads. By using this, I will write the expression for the torque, for lowering of the load and that, how I will apply for lifting the load, P will be equal to W tan phi 1 plus alpha. What is phi 1? Phi 1 we will calculate that is equal to mu 1. And what is mu 1? Mu 1 is mu upon cos beta. Replace like this only. Mu 1 you will calculate the mu is given, you calculate mu 1. From mu 1 you will calculate the phi 1 and from the value here. Whole expression which remains. Right? Same for lowering the load. The effort P expression is equal to 10 phi 1 minus alpha. And what phi 1? 10 phi 1 equal to mu 1 and mu 1 is mu upon cos only uh, take this consideration and uh, other calculation is done by this by taking this expression for the acme thread is it thank you so this is quite simple for the acme thread and the other calculation as we have done for the square thread in the same way you do Overcoming the friction of the screw threads, but there is a one torque also, right? One torque also. Uh, right? If there is a collar present. Then torque in overcoming the collar friction. So we have already uh, know uh, the frictional torque in collars that are done on the basis of two theories that is the uniform wear theory or the uniform pressure theory. On the basis of that, I am going to write the expression directly here, right? So in overcoming the collar friction, then torque expression Tc, that is a torque for collar, C for collar, this is mu w rm. Rm kya hai? This is main radius. I can write 2 by 3 r naught q minus ri q upon r naught square minus r i square for uniform pressure theory for uniform wear theory this is r naught plus r i by so then we also have to consider the torque in overcoming the friction of the collar friction. This expression is mu w rm, where rm is the main radius and how it is replaced? 
this is stunt and this is skirt. This is stunt, this is a screw, this is DC and uh, this is D, outer diameter or nominal diameter. So design of a screw means what stresses are generated on the screw or on the nut during the lifting or lowering of the loom. So the screw is subjected to two, two type of stresses that is the direct compressive stress, direct compressive stress and shear stress. Compressive stress and second is uh, right. So in uh, design of a screw and the nut, right. So this is the diagram. Now this is screw, this is screw is subjected to a compressive load W. This is screw is subjected to compressive load W due to which it is subjected to the compressive stress and the torsional shear stress, right. Well, compressive stress can be written as sigma c is equal to w upon pi by 4 dc square and this torsional stress can be written as 16 t upon pi dc into right? the screw will be subjected to both the stresses sigma c and tau s now there are two stresses and both are at perpendicular direction now what will be the maximum value and how the screw is designed then screws are designed because screws are made of the rectangle materials so this will be designed on the basis of maximum principal stress theory and the basis of maximum shear stress but principal stress theory we will calculate the tau max. Then tau max expression can be written as under root sigma c by 2 chi square plus tau s square. On the basis of this, we will find out the um, shear stress in the screw. Right? But the thread of the nut are also in a contact with the thread of the nut and thread of the screw. Then there is a uh, the thread जो है वो स्क्रू और इसके एंगेजमेंट में हैं तो आर सब्जेक्टेड टू अ ट्रांसफर सीर लोड आल्सो राइट एस थ्रेड्स ऑफ स्क्रू आर एंगेज्ड टू थ्रेड्स ऑफ नट this is the nut, so threads are engaged. At least there is a another stress is also working. That is, so a screw is subjected to transverse shear stress. Right? Then it will also subject it to the transverse shear stress. Right now, we will find out the transfer shear stress. So the transfer shear stress can be given as tau s is equal to w upon because uh, for the s group we always design on the core diameter. Then this will be written as pi dc because t t is the thickness of this. What is t? T is the thickness of the thread. This will be pi dc into t, this is the shear stress area, right, into j. This is the expression for transfer shear stress, where t is the thickness of thread. You can take it as p by 2, if not given anywhere, where p is the pitch, which uh, for the square thread I have already told you. In a starting and where Z 
Z is the number of threads. Z is the number of threads. Is it right? In the same way, the nut is also under the transverse U.S. structure because the threads are engaged of both nut and screw. So then, for the nut, the threads of the nut are also under the transverse U.S. stress. So we will write the expression for transverse U.S. stress for the nut. Transverse. Shear stress for nut. What will be the expression? What will be the expression? Expression will be for nut. This was for screw. So for nut, what will be the diameter of the nut? Here, that is the nominal diameter of this. The expression will change only by pi dt into z only this diameter because for the nut we will take this diameter nominal diameter or uh, for the uh, screw we will take core diameter both will under the uh, transverse shear stress is if uh, if bearing pressure between contacting surfaces then bending stress uh, bearing stress and uh, bearing pressure of the contacting stress then it can be written as S is equal to W upon bearing pressure. Bearing pressure means this area hole. Matlab apply like karte this area. So bearing pressure will act on the on the on the threaded portion that is the uh, enlarged portion. Only on the is the bearing pressure will act. Then expression can be written as pi by four d square minus d c square or into number of this is bearing pressure okay. so this is whole about uh, the design of the power screw and the nut now we will discuss uh, one uh, problem now we will discuss one uh, problem about this then whole will be concluded by solving one numerical problem I am going uh, to run it. Now, we will solve one problem. So, we can summarize of all the formulas what we have discussed. Write down the problem, please. Still, and, uh, I am drawing the diagram. Right? Then, a machine wise, as shown in the figure, has a single start. Has a single start this is the machine wise Problem is given like a machine wise as shown in the figure has a single start 
square thread with 22 mm nominal diameter so what uh, and 5 mm pitch the outer and the inner diameter of the friction collars are 55 and 45 respectively the coefficient of friction uh, now you can see the coefficient of friction for the thread and the collars are 0.15 and 0.17 respectively that mechanist can comfortably exert a force of 125 newton on the handle at a mean radius of 150 mm assuming the uniform wear theory for the collar calculate the clamping force developed between the jaws and the overall efficiency of the clamp right so now i have already drawn the diagram so what i am going to write now we are going to solve this problem first before solving understand this diagram what is here this is a jaw and by the help of a screw this is a handle and we are applying the force here we are applying the force we are uh, providing the rotation motion due to the rotation the jaw will move either in this or either in this the direction of the moving jaw is given that means the jaw is given in this direction and if there is a, a load then it will displace in this direction or it will be compressing this direction is it the length handle to length that is given 150 mm. is it so what we have to calculate the clamping force clamping force the something jo yahan pe rakha hua hai usko clamp karne ke liye jo force hai wo hame chahiye that means hame w ki requirement hai aur second jo pucha gaya hai humse overall efficiency jo hum malum hai humko kya hota hai so now what we will do we will write the given parameter what given parameter for screw ke liye first we write here for screw the nominal diameter is 22 mm it is given pitch is given this is 5 mm right single start is given single start means lead will be equal to pitch that is equal to 5 mm and coefficient of friction is given 0.15 for the screw for collars ke liye what are the given parameter is an outer diameter is given that is d out that i am write down 55 Sorry, how much it is given? This is 55, not 90. And inner diameter is given. This is 45. Right? And coefficient of friction is given for a uh, collar. So I write it new C. This is 0.17. And for handle, what it is given for handle? It is given the length. Then I am writing L. This is 150 mm. And force at handle it is applied. So P H is given. How much it is? Uh, 125 newton. These are the given parameters for solving this. So you have to find W. And second is efficiency. Right? This we have to calculate. Now start solving the problem. I'm going to draw all the parameters. For W, how W will be calculated? Calculated W will be calculated by the torque formula. Torque formula. Torque formula. What is it? Total torque will be equal to so T S plus T C, and torque is equal to P H into L or W into uh, W into D M and pi plus alpha. If I find the torque by using this expression, because P H is given, L is given, torque is easily calculated. If the torque is calculated, if I uh, this is by two, this is. Plus this is the torque only T S plus T C. What is T C? T C is mu W R. So by using this expression, I will calculate the torque. Is it got it? Now what parameters are given? P given, H is given. We can easily find out the calculation. Uh, we can easily find out the total torque. Now W we have to find mu is given. 
this is the mu c this is for the color right w dm phi and alpha if i find the phi alpha if i calculate the phi alpha and uh, rm is given dm is given and put in this expression then i can find out this uh, w is it thank you now move towards we have the expression of tan alpha what is tan alpha tan alpha is l upon pi dm what is dm dm is d minus 0.5 p 0.5 p so what is 0.5 p dm is dm is 22 minus 0.5 how much which is given which is 5 so then dm will come 19.5 mm is it for n5 n5 will be equal to mu this is 0.15 then 5 will come how much 5 will come this will come 8.5 mm now dm i have calculated the 10 alpha expression and alpha equal to L upon pi dm, right? So tan alpha will be equal to L, L is the pitch, that is a phi upon pi into 22. Then alpha will come 4.67, right? I have calculated this dm, I have calculated this phi, I have calculated this alpha, right? All the parameters I have calculated. Now I have to calculate this Rm. Now I am R L no. I put it in this directly. Okay, I am going to rub it. Now, what is the expression? T will be equal to pH into L. That is equal to W. W how much it is given? I don't know. W I have to calculate. Dm is this is uh, 19.5 by 2. Then phi plus alpha. Phi is 8.53, alpha is 4.67 plus mu c, mu c is 0.17 into w. What is Rm? Rm is R0 plus Ri by 2. Yes or no? Very good. Solve it. pH is 125. This is 150. Unit is Newton. Check the unit. Newton M. Is it? Here W that we have to I have to calculate. Uh, this will come 19.52. If I take it out W outside, this is 10 8.53 plus 4.67 plus 0.17 R0 plus Ri. What is R0? R0 is uh, 22 plus Ri is 45. This is 22.5. Why do? If I solve this, all is in Newton mm. If I solve it, then W can be calculated from here and it will come. It will come 2868.73 this is our answer is it quite simple right we have read it well, we have write the expression this and this separately but both are given uh, in a same like this now second is overall efficiency Overall efficiency. Overall efficiency is W in output by W into L upon input T into pi. W is we have calculated that is 2868.73 into L is 5. T is that is a total torque. What is the total torque? This is 125 into 150. I have not calculated. This is P to L. 
the time data dynamic field into 2 pi. If I calculate, then it will come 12.18. So this is done the problem that I have discussed. Thank you very much. I hope that you have understood the problem. Thank you very much. Thank you.